just like the puddles, the snow will also have a dynamic system that will um, remove snow under objects. As you can see, the snow will not reach below an object. And if I move the object, uh, there will also be no snow here on the fence, except for the part where it is actually in the snow. That's a pretty cool system. It works out of the box. But, of course, um, it has a little bit of performance overhead. Uh, in the editor, this happens every tick. So if I move the object, you will see that the cutout on the snow will be dynamically updated. In the game, however, this doesn't work every tick. Because that will be too heavy. And it's also not needed. In the game... Um, you can actually see the same thing happening in the editor if you go to editor preview and then disable the update rain occlusion each tick. What then happens if, if I move this, it will not update. It will only update if I move the camera 5 meters away from my last point. And that's exactly how it also works in the game. Uh, so every 5 meters that the player is moving, the uh, the, the rain occlusion will be updated and if you want to see in the editor what's happening then you could go to the advanced settings open the advanced tab and click on show all components in the editor if you do that you will notice that not only there is this audio thing that's always on the camera but there is also uh, in the Somewhere high in the air, the highest point of your uh, uh, of your map, there will be a camera, and that camera is updating every five meters, as you can see over here. And that camera is actually making a snapshot of the uh, of your level, and then comparing the pixels that are below there to see if there is something blocking that camera, if there is something in front of it, like this cube over here. So it will remove the snow and rain puddles below the, uh, the block. And this is a good way to debug what's going on. And this level is a little bit hard because all of these big mountains that are uh, here they also get uh, included in the objects uh, that, that are being captured by the camera and you could say that that's not really needed because the camera will never be or the player will never be close to one of those objects so it's not mandatory to have those objects in the uh, objects to be captured and we can change that if we want. If we go to weather, there is a classes to ignore for blocking. And the classes that are over here are all the classes that will not block the, um, the rain and the snow. So for example, skeletal mesh actors will never block the rain or the snow. And that's because they're dynamic actors. And if they start moving, you want to see the occlusion also move with it. But that doesn't really make any sense. Because if there was snow already, and then a character runs through it, there should still be snow. So that's why they're excluded. The only things that are now included are actually static objects. Because this is the list of uh, classes that you want to exclude explicitly but there is also a channel or multiple channels that are being used for objects that can actually block the the rain and in by default that's only world static and almost everything that is static is getting the world static uh, parameter but this could also lead to some bugs um, I've seen some people will use the procedural foliage system where the volume of the procedural foliage system was actually set to 
um, static, block uh, world static, which is not ideal and it, it shouldn't be because it's not a static object, it should be just a world dynamic. Uh, but let's say we get a blocking volume and right now it's set to invisible wall, but if we uh, change that and we just say block all, that means that it is automatically added as a world static um, and that could mean that it also blocks snow. Now in this case it doesn't because this volume does not have a collision. Um, it, it does not have a visual uh, hooked up to it. So even if the camera is looking at it, it is not being registered as an object. However, if this had some kind of a visual, then it would actually block the snow. And I think we can easily show that with another block. And let's make that bigger as well. Let's make sure we update every tick again so that we can easily spot what's going on. So this is now by default set to uh, the default collision preset, which is block all. If we set it to no collision, it will not collide anymore. And if we set it to block all dynamic, it also won't work. Even though it is blocking our player, etc., it is not blocking the rain right now because it is not block all dynamic uh, is not the object type world static. This is object type world dynamic. Ragdoll will also not do it. Right now nothing will do that um, except for world static. If you wish to, you could add multiple uh, collision channels. So here we could now add the uh, where is it physics body and now this will actually block it because Ragdoll is a physics body. So that's good to know. Uh, and also keep in mind that this in the game, when you hit play, only gets updated every 5 meters the player is moving. Which also means that if you spawn something and you want to immediately let it block snow or rain uh, or anything, then uh, you can do two things. Uh, but I think the easiest thing to do is to call a function in Easy Sky. And that function is under the callable functions, and it is called regenerate puddles. So when you spawn this guy, uh, the, the, the object that, that, that you spawn that needs to block the puddles, just uh, to block the rain or the snow, just call this function. Um, you can do force update. Uh, I think that's actually a wise thing to do. And then it will force doing an object update of all the objects again. So it will include the object that you just spawned as well. What you could also do, instead of forcing an entire update, is uh, adding an actor uh, or actors. And in this case, um, you could either just add that one single actor that you just added, or you can add an entire array of actors. Both will work.